This Fizzcast looks at using Ohm's law on a wire carrying a current. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. Now that you've read through the question, let's begin with an interpret step to see what the question is really involving. It should be clear from your reading that we're going to need to look for some relationships between some of the quantities involved. In particular, we might be looking for relationships between the current, the current density, the electric field, the potential difference, which we might refer to here as voltage, and the conductivity of the material of the wire. So many of these connections, these relationships, will come from a consideration of Ohm's law. And we might be using that in the microscopic or macroscopic form. We'll think more about that as we move into our develop stage of our solution. Let's start with a quick little diagram here. Basically we have a wire. We don't know the length of the wire, let's just call that capital L for now, but we do know that there is a 75 millivolt potential difference between the ends of the wire. We also know that inside the wire there's a current density, in this case of 6 by 10 to the 5 amps per square meter, and that current density is due to an electric field that exists in the wire of 0.15 newtons per coulomb. We also know that the cross-sectional area of this wire is, well it's given here in square millimetres, but let's make sure we convert correctly because it's not just a length to a length, it's an area to an area, so we've got to make sure we get our units right. This will actually be 2 by 10 to the minus 6 square metres. So some relationships that we might either need to remember or possibly look up in our lecture notes or textbook um, is that well, current density is a fairly easy one. It's current per unit area. Oh, and I should point out here to try to avoid any possible confusion between symbols for quantities, such as capital A here for the area, and symbols that are used for unit, such as capital A here for amperes, the unit of current. And you'll see this not infrequently in, uh, in some of the problems we'll be dealing with. And so you need to make sure you can avoid any possible confusion between similar looking symbols, sometimes for a quantity, sometimes for a unit. So current density J is current per unit area, and Ohm's law in the microscopic form says that's going to be equal to the electric field multiplied by the conductivity of the material that that field is in. So this sigma here is indicating the conductivity of the material. Another form of Ohm's law that you may know has to do with the potential difference with a current flowing and that's going to equal the resistance that that current is flowing through. And in terms of material properties we can think of that in terms of a resistivity multiplied by a length divided by an area. Where this symbol here, the rho in our equation here, resistivity of the material and this conductivity and resistivity are just reciprocals of each other and that's a nice relationship to also keep in mind. Let's move on to the evaluate step in our solution. We should have enough information here. The first thing we're asked to evaluate is the conductivity of the wire material. So this first equation here, this microscopic form of Ohm's law, uh, shows us quite straightforwardly that we can write that conductivity down as simply the current density divided by the electric field. And they're both quantities that are given to us in the problem here we have 6 by 10 to the 5, here we have 0 0.15 in their appropriate units which gives us uh, a, a value here of 4 by 10 to the 6. Uh, we need to make sure we understand the units here. The units of conductivity will be the reciprocal of the units of resistivity which I happen to remember are ohms times meters. So for conductivity it will be ohms times meters all to the negative 1. So there's the first part of my solution, calculated out. The second part is asking me for the length of the wire that I've called capital L here and I might use this macroscopic version of Ohm's law where I can rearrange that for the length to show that the length of this must equal the area times the potential difference divided by the resistivity multiplied by current and I might rewrite that as the area 
times the potential difference. And rather than having resistivity on the bottom, I can have conductivity on the top because they're reciprocals of each other. And rather than writing current as I, I might use the microscopic form of ohms or the definition of current density here to write my current as simply my current density multiplied by area. And then I can see that my area is actually cancelled top and bottom. And I'm left with a reasonably simple uh, calculation to do here, all using quantities that I've either been given or have just calculated. So now I have 75 millivolts was the potential difference across my wire. My conductivity I just calculated is 4 by 10 to the power of 6. And I was given that current density of 6 by 10 to the 5. And I do that calculation and I find I get the value of 0 0.5. And that will be in units of meters. That's the length of my wire. I shouldn't finish without doing a quick assessment step. Uh, one nice one to try here is to realize that I've got a constant cross section in my wire. So that tells me that the electric field in the wire must be a uniform field. There's not going to be any spatial variation in my electric field. So I can use a nice relationship between electric field, potential difference, and the distance across which that potential difference is occurring. And that's a good relationship to remember for a uniform field. And one way you might recall that is another unit of electric field that you can use is actually the volt per meter. That's an equivalent unit to Newton per coulomb. And that might remind you that it's a potential difference divided by a, a distance or a length. So I can rearrange that to independently calculate my length here will simply be my potential difference divided by electric field. Uh, again, values I'm given in the problem. My potential difference was 75 millivolts. Uh, my electric field was 0 0.15 newtons per coulomb or volts per meter. And I calculate that value to come out to 0 0.5 meters, same as above and that gives me some confidence in my initial calculation.